morning everyone i am dr mohit choudhary today we'll be discussing a very important topic which is also a important topic for the dnb students in their exam that is transfusion related immunomodulation this topic has been selected especially because uh, one of the students had requested us to talk about this and uh, this topic will be covered by my colleague dr shafina who will be talking about the main definition of trim the history of trim the postulated mechanism the pathophysiology of trim uh, that is the transfusion related immunomodulation what are its effects whether it's beneficial or deleterious effects and to conclude whether it is to be practiced how it is to be managed if it is to be managed and what are the implications of trim in uh, transplant patients and in other patients so over to dr shafina for the further presentation good morning to all i am dr shafina so today my topic of presentation is transfusion related immunomodulation or trim so in this topic i will be covering definition history related to trim postulated mechanisms or pathophysiology effects of trim that is beneficial and deleterious effect and conclusion transfusion related immunomodulation can be defined as a variety of the laboratory immune aberrations that occur after allogeneic blood transfusion and their established clinical effects so trim includes both immunomodulatory effects and pro inflammatory effects so allogeneic blood transfusion can cause either alloimmunization or tolerance and it is dependent on the presence or absence of autologous hla dr antigen on donor wbc so if there is a fully mismatched hla dr antigen that can lead to alloimmunization if there is at least one hla dr antigen sharing then that can lead to tolerance so trim can be seen as potentially pro inflammatory or immunosuppressive effect this is because of the allogeneic blood transfusion due to the mediators that are already preformed and present in the blood component or the mediators produced by the recipient as a response to the allogeneic blood transfusion these are the documented immune function alterations in association with allogeneic blood transfusion they are decreased t helper cell count decreased helper to suppressor t cell ratio decreased lymphocyte response to mutagens reduction in delay type hypersensitivity decreased natural killer cell function b cell and t cell activation hyper gamma globulinemia decreased cytokine production suppression of lymphocyte blaster genesis decreased monocyte and macrophage phagocytic function and increased production of anti idiotypic antibodies coming to the history related to trim so it was in 1972 first trim was reported and it was by opels et al so they reported that there is pre transplant allogeneic blood transfusion can improve renal graft survival then in 1980 brunson et al established that there is transfusion associated immune suppression then in 1981 jand et al reported the possibility of association between allogeneic blood transfusion and increased cancer recurrence then later in 1980 leuco reduction started to reduce the effect of trim and then in 1998 van de watting reported the association between allogeneic blood transfusion and short term mortality coming to the postulated mechanisms of trim so trim can be because of the allogeneic mononuclear cells or the wbcs present in the blood component or because of the soluble hla class 1 peptides that is circulating in the allogeneic plasma or because of the soluble biologic respond modifiers that are released from the wbc granules or membrane into the supernatant fluid of red cells or platelet concentrate during the storage so we will be dealing with all these mechanism one by one the first one is allogeneic mononuclear cell mediated mechanism so when there is an allogeneic blood transfusion there is an interaction between the patient t cell and the donor dendritic antigen presenting cell with mhc class 2 on their surface and this interaction is completely dependent on hla compatibility between the patient and donor cell then the donor blood characters and also dependent upon the patient's immune or inflammatory status suppose if there is at least one matching between the mhc class 2 and the patient cell then there is co stimulatory signal and there will be immunosuppression which will lead to allograft tolerance but if there is no matching at all then there is immune activation or inflammation in patient along with that we can see another mechanism called as microchimerism so what is microchimerism 
so when there is an hla compatibility between donor and recipient that can lead to the persistence of a small number of donor lymphocytes or the antigen presenting cells in patient circulation and this will lead to the gradual release of interleukin 4 interleukin 10 and tgf beta and these mediators then will cause inhibition of the production of t type 1 helper cells and that will gradually lead to immunosuppression and suppressing the allograft rejection so this microchimerism is found mostly in trauma patients and they found that this microchimerism can persist for up to two years after transfusion it is also found that not only the transfused intact immunologically competent wbcs but also the transfused apoptotic or necrotic wbcs can also provoke trin response next mechanism is through biological response modifiers these modifiers or mediators are contained in intracellular WBC granules and they are released in a time dependent manner as the WBC deteriorates during the storage state. And the biological response modifiers are histamine, myeloperoxidase, eosinophilic cationic proteins and plasminogen activator inhibitor. And it is found that their amount will increase 3 to 25 times in the supernatant fluid of red cell between 0 to 35 days of storage. And what these modifiers do is they will decrease the neutrophil's normal function and that will lead to the development of immunosuppression. Next mechanism, soluble HLA molecules. So soluble HLA molecules are present in plasma of healthy donors. If these molecules are non-polymorphic peptides from class 1, that can induce antigen non-specific immunosuppression. If they are polymorphic HLA class 1, then that can lead to antigen specific immunomodulatory effect. And if this allogenic plasma containing soluble HLA enters into the patient's thymic circulation, there will be clonal deletion of the recipient T cell that are directed against the allogenic donor antigens and that is leading to immunosuppression. Gio et al. and Pepo et al. found that along with the soluble class 1 HLA, there are some soluble fast ligand molecules also in the supernatant plasma of red cells and platelets. So if there is infusion of the soluble fast ligand that can bind to the fast molecules on the natural killer cells and cytotoxic T cells. So this will impair their function that is the prevention of the binding of fast to the viral infected cells and this makes the patient more prone for infections. Autoantibodies also have a role in trick that is some healthy donors have large amount of neutralizing autoantibodies to a number of growth factors like the granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor or against the cytokines. So when there is transmission of these autoantibodies they can neutralize the cytokines in recipient leading to transmission related inhibition of cytokines or trick. So trick make the patient more susceptible to infections effect of the length of red cell storage as we all know if the red cells are stored for a long time red cell storage lesions can develop so there will be reduction in the ph accumulation of lactate and other metabolites so bioactive lipids and other soluble mediators accumulate during the storage and if there is red cell lysis there will be accumulation of cell free hemoglobin heme and iron all these mediators can lead to the generation of reactive oxygen species and later tissue damage so these substances can directly or indirectly affect the innate immune system of the patient. So in short, longer stored RBC can lead to trim and inflammation and worse survival of the patient. So these are the mechanisms we discussed till now. When there is an allogenic blood transfusion along with the blood component, some soluble and insoluble mediators and cells are also transfused and they are intact and residual WBCs, soluble fast ligand HLA molecules or TGF beta. If there is red cell lysis, there are chances of cell free heme, iron or ubiquitin. Then bioactive lipids and extracellular vesicles are also transfused. So these mediators can affect the recipient immune system and that will lead to trim effect. And the inflammatory trim effects are aluminization, neutrophil activation, monocyte activation and inflammatory cytokine release. And the immunosuppressive effects are increased anti-inflammatory cytokine release, decreased monocyte or macrophage cytokine production capacity, decreased neutrophil function, decreased in the natural killer cell activity, immune cell apoptosis and T cell energy and impair proliferation. Coming to the clinical relevance of trim effect. So there are some beneficial and deleterious effect. 
the beneficial effects postulated are improved renal allograft survival, treatment of recurrent spontaneous abortion and reduced risk of Crohn's disease. And the deleterious effects are there is a possibility for increased cancer recurrence, possibility for increased post-operative infection, increased short-term mortality in cardiac surgery and increased risk of reactivation of CMV and HIV. Beneficial effects. First one, enhanced survival of renal allograft. So this is the only clearly established beneficial trim effect. So they found that the patient who have allogenic blood transfusion have a significantly better renal allograft survival than untransfused patient regardless of the number of HLA, B or DR locus mismatch. And this beneficial effect was found to be independent of age, gender and the underlying disease. Observation studies shown that non-WBC reduced PRC units have a better outcome than the patients transfused with the WBC reduced units. This indicates allogenic WBCs are involved in eliciting this beneficial effect of trip. And some other studies shown that the patients who receive more than 10 PRC units have a better one-year allograft survival than the patients who received fewer units. But these patients showed a poor overall survival. So, this suggests that, that multi-transfused patients develop cytotoxic antibodies and they are at risk for allograft rejection. Next beneficial effect was reduced risk of recurrent spontaneous abortion. So, the fetus represents as a semi-allogenic graft to its mother and the maintenance of pregnancy depends on the immunological equilibrium between the fetus and mother. When the genetic parent shares the HLA antigen, this equilibrium is altered predisposing the pregnant woman to recurrent spontaneous abortion. And to prevent this, transmission of allogenic WBCs has been proposed. And the WBCs are given in the form of pooled Buffy coat, single donor Buffy coats and RBC suspensions containing WBCs. Next beneficial effect is reduce the risk of recurrence of Crohn's disease. So studies examined the role of perioperative allogenic blood transfusion in modulating disease activity in patients with Crohn's disease. But the pooled data from this existing study suggests that the recurrence rate in transfused versus non-transfused patients is almost similar and the present studies indicate there is no significant benefit. All these three beneficial effects were reported before the introduction of modern immunosuppressive drugs and before the introduction of solid phase technology to detect the formation of cytotoxic antibodies. So in this modern era, unnecessary allogenic transfusion should be avoided and if the patient recurs allogenic blood transfusion, WBC reduced units should be given to reduce the risk of HLA aluminization and other infection transmissions. Coming to the deleterious effects of TRIP, first one, increased recurrence of resected malignancies. So the host immune response to a tumor controls the tumor growth. When there is allogenic blood transfusion that can lead to immunosuppression or impairment of host immunity and that will lead to tumor growth. So a meta-analysis from more than 100 observation studies found there is a statistically significant clinical outcome among transfused patients comparing with the untransfused patients. So when there is allogenic blood transfusion along with the red cell, there are transfusion of residual leukocytes or apoptotic cells, extracellular vesicles, microparticles and some free hemoglobin. So these all factors will lead to transfusion related immunomodulation or immune suppression and that can lead to cancer growth and dissemination in patient. Next deleterious effect is post-operative infections. So, so many observation studies compared the risk of post-operative infection in transfused and un untransfused patients and the meta-analysis found that there is no significant association between the outcome of patients that received allogenic transfusion versus the patients who didn't got the allogenic transfusions. Next deleterious effect is the increased risk of short-term mortality that is 3 months post-transfusion. So the RCT of one day watering at all was designed to investigate an association between non leuco reduced blood and post-operative infection. But instead they observed an association between non-WBC reduced allogenic transfusion and mortality. So non-WBC reduced allogenic transfusion can predispose to multi-organ failure and hence causing increased mortality. And most evidences suggest that 
This organ failure or tissue injury is mediated by the reactive oxygen species and proteolytic enzymes released from activated neutrophils. So this is the proposed mechanism of non-WBC reduced allogenic blood transfusion and multi-organ failure. So when there is an allogenic blood transfusion, there will be deteriorating WBCs in the stored red cell units that is releasing enzymes. These enzymes will act on the red cell membrane predisposing them to the production of bioactive lipids. These mediators will act on the endothelium and lead into inflammation and also will cause neutrophil priming. So there will be reactive oxygen species production and enhanced cytotoxicity. So to avoid this we can do the pre-storage leukocyte reduction so that there will not be any deteriorating WBCs in the red cell units. Potentially vulnerable population for TRIM are post-operative patients, trauma and sepsis, cardiopulmonary bypass and transplantation patients. Now, what is the role of leukoreduction in TRIM? So, the RCTs are not proving that the leukoreduction will reduce the effect of TRIM. But we have to promote leukoreduction because of its proven benefits like the reduction of infections like CMV or HIV, for preventing the HLA or plated aluminization and for the prevention of febrile non hemolytic transfusion reactions. And the pre-storage pre leukoreduction can help in abolishing TRIM. And in clinical studies, only the post-operative cardiac patients have demonstrated a benefit in reducing the post-operative infections. Methodological problems we face during the study of TRIM are the most of the studies are observational studies. There is insufficiency of prospective double-blinded RCTs. And when we think of TRIM, we should consider the confounding factors like the patient characters or the donor unit characters or the modifiers that might be there in the donor unit. And in especially in Western countries, there is widespread introduction of universal leukoreduction. So this decreased the opportunity to perform RCTs of WBC reduced versus non-WBC reduced allogenic blood transfusions. Summary, the deleterious trim effects reported are increased recurrence rate of resected malignancies, increased incidence of post-operative bacterial infections, activation of endogenous CMV or HIV infections and increased short-term mortality. And these are may be caused by the soluble HLA peptide circulating in the allogenic plasma, soluble WBC derived mediators in the supernatant fluid of red cells or because of the allogenic mononuclear cells or the WBC. Now, how can we prevent this? So, we can prevent this by at autologous transfusion or by the pre-storage WBC reduction or leukoreduction. Conclusion Transfusion related immunomodulation is a real biological phenomenon and TRIM results in at least one established beneficial clinical effect that is the survival of renal allograft and various other unconfirmed deleterious effects. And it still remains unclear whether the deleterious effects are truly existing or not. And in theory, pre-storage WBC reduction may lead to prevention of these trim effects. But it still remains unproven that leukoreduction improves morbidity or mortality. And the available RCTs have not demonstrated a benefit from autologous transfusion in preventing adverse trim effects. Thank you so much for the patient listening and we hope that the video helps and please feel free to ask doubts in the comment section.